You don't really know much about Halloween. Everybody, and welcome back to another unboxing this week, month, year, date, whenever you watch this. We're unboxing the Vinegar Syndrome March releases since I decided to get a subscriber package this year for the first time, and I have not regretted it so far. Um, and these are the titles that were part of that package. And I have a couple of extra little things that I picked up along the way that I thought maybe you'd be interested in, just to switch it up a little. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So first of all, we have one that I mentioned on the prior video, but I actually have the copy, so I thought I'd bring it up again just so you could see it. Uh, is Herencia Diabolica, I think is how you say that. This is directed uh, by Alfredo Salazar from 1993. This was Alfredo Salazar's last film, which I don't know if I mentioned it in the prior video, but I am a fan of the Aztec Mummy films, and it's the guy responsible. So this was the last film before he stopped making films and eventually, unfortunately, passed away. Um, but I'm not familiar with any of the stars, um, so, you know, feel free to look them up. I won't mention them here. Um, but it's basically, it's about a, a diabolical clown that murders people that are cruel to, uh, it says cruel to him, but I'm not sure if they mean him, the doll, or him, the little boy that inherits the doll. Uh, basically it's the Mexican Chucky is what they equate it with. Um, it's kind of a straight up oddity. And if you are not familiar, I'll put the, the gif right here from this film. Uh, if you are a person that uses GIFs, you've probably used this GIF at some point in your life. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the trivia about this. It's, it, it's a meme now. Next up, we have this one I'm very excited about. This is The Last Slumber Party, which, you know, if uh, you ever go to a slumber party, eventually you're going to go to the last one and then you don't have them anymore when you're an adult. You could, but a lot of people don't. Uh, this is from 1988. This is directed by Steven Tyler. Not that Steven Tyler, but the director, Steven Tyler. Um, the, he only has one other movie to his credit and a music video, so not a huge career. Uh, the stars, not anybody you've ever heard of. I hadn't heard of any of them. Uh, this movie is about three girls who throw a slumber party to celebrate the last day of high school. Some boys show up and then a homicidal maniac shows up, you know, as, as will happen. Um, fun ensues. So this film was shot in 1984, uh, but not released until 1988 and has been a favorite of bad movie lovers, including uh, a riff tracks that was done for this film. Some just little fun information here. David Whitley, who plays Dr. What was it? Sickler. Um, and Joanne Whitley, uh, who plays his daughter, were married in real life. So kind of a weird Venn diagram there, but I'll let you do the math on that. Uh, next up, we have probably the one that I think I've heard the most about. I just watched a video about this. Uh, yesterday or the day before with Mrs. Newly Dead, who was taping over there. Um, and it is Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Uh, this is from 1965. This is another Amicus production, which uh, if you follow the Newly Deads on Facebook, you'll see that we had recently watched Vault of Terror and Tales from the Crypt, which uh, uh, I had pur purchased, which is a Shout Factory 2 first, so it's got both movies on there. Um, not a whole lot of special features, but some. And um, these are anthology films, which Amicus was kind of the, uh, uh, not they, they weren't competing with, with Hammer per se, but uh, they were kind of running in competition with each other. I guess that's kind of the same thing. But anyway, uh, this was directed by Freddie Francis, who did Tales from the Crypt and also did The Deadly Bees, which we've never seen it. I don't know that you need to, but just a heads up. This stars uh, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, and a very young... Donald Sutherland in one of his earlier roles. Uh, so aboard a British train, a mysterious fortune teller named Dr. Shrek uses tarot cards to read the futures of his fellow passengers. Um, and as if you've seen the other Amicus films, you'll know, then they have kind of morality tales and dark stories that are little tiny bite-sized vignettes. Uh, this was inspired by 1945's Dead of Night, 
which if you've not seen, um, has actually come up in a video that I watched recently and also was talking to Mrs. Newley that, that about, um, which is on the shelf, incidentally. It's a very early anthology film, and it's kind of notorious for their ventriloquist dummy scene. That is the final story uh, outside of the wraparound. But there's a scene where Biff is running down the street, one of the characters from this film, and he passes a cinema with, with a poster of uh, this film, and uh, the characters' names are on it instead of the actors. A little fact. So when you're watching it, check it out. Oh, and this is 4K. So if you've got a 4K player, I've heard it's beautiful. I don't have one yet, but uh, I'm starting to collect them because when I do, I want to be ready. Is that pointless? I don't know. Anyway, uh, next up we have Spectres. And also, hold on, let me make sure it's safe. Uh, Maya. Um, this is from 1987 and 89, respectively. Uh, they're both directed by Marcello Avalon. And uh, Maya is kind of one that I'd, I'd never heard of, but once uh, this was announced, it was getting released. There was a lot of chatter on the various groups for Vinegar Syndrome and uh, slasher movies and horror movies in general, that it's one that people have been kind of anxious to get out there, like it's kind of an undiscovered thing that a lot of people have not seen. Uh, this stars Donald Pleasant, Pleasant excuse me, going to wreck that there, um, and not anyone else that I'm really familiar with. Um, so in this film, a uh, professor and his assistants discover a tomb under Rome. Now that is for uh, specters. So I've got the right one. Okay. Um, they release an ancient spirit and sounds kind of unique, but also unoriginal at the same time. And um, the other one, Maya, an ancient evil awakens in a Mexican village and only a mystical doctor can stop it. This sounds kind of similar uh, to some other stuff you've probably seen as well. Um, this is uh, the first of only two films by this director, um, which is Maya and... So, there you go. Got the whole collection now. All right, moving on. This one, uh, I don't know what to make of this one. Never heard of it. Heard good things, but uh, seems a little bit out there. Uh, this is Singapore Sling from 1990. Uh, I already can tell it looks a little Hellraiser-y, BDSM-y, whatever. Um, this is directed by Nikos Nikolaidis. Nico Nikolaidis? I should have verified that ahead of time a little better. Um, but uh, I don't know who the stars are currently, um, but I'm going to find out after I see it, I'm sure, because I'll be doing my research as I'm watching, as I do with all the movies I see. Um, so this one's kind of too strange to put into words. I've, like I said, I've read a lot of good things about it, so I'm curious, um, but would not have probably picked it up if, if it wasn't for the subscriber package. Um, there is an Icelandic band that has the same name because they saw this film and decided to use it for the name of their band. Um, it's a little risque. We'll leave it at that from what I hear. So we'll see. Now, uh, this is where we've gotten off of the vinegar syndrome packaging. And now we're on to the uh, odds and ends that I picked up recently as well. that I thought I should bring in here because some of these are things you might be interested in. So first of all, we have the Daleks in color, which for the, uh, the 60th anniversary, um, Russell T. Davis decided to do some fun things, which same thing that happened in the 50th anniversary. And so what he did was he took the original Dalek story, which was a seven part serial, and he combined it into one hour and a half. He edited things out, which some people that are purists may have a problem with. Uh, he put it in color and uh, made it into a single, you know, hour and a half plus uh, film. Uh, this was directed by Richard Martin. Um, who did 22 episodes of Doctor Who and a bunch of other stuff outside of that. This is from the William Hartnell era. And uh, this is, uh, like I said, the first Doctor Who story, it was uh, the seven bits that it was put in originally were 25 minutes each. You can tell it's been cut down pretty substantially, but it's they said they cut it for the modern Who audience. So if anybody who started watching Who after 2005, this is supposed to be more towards their taste. If you're somebody like myself who started, I started in 1984. Um, you're used to the original storytelling. So I've seen the original, um, and it, this was very well done. If you can't tell, uh, I actually already opened and watched this because I, I honestly didn't want to wait. So um, this episode takes place in 2160. Um, originally, Jenny was going to be Susan's replacement. All right, 2160? I did. But uh, was halted as they weren't sure about the future of the series series, excuse me, takes place in 2160s. I don't know what I mean there. I think that's the year that the, 
that was supposed to have happened. My notes are a little fuzzy there, so I'm just going to blame myself on uh, Astral for future sins. Uh, this is an older title. Uh, this is a, a Screen Factory. This is A Town That Dreaded Sundown. Uh, one of my good friends on YouTube, uh, Mr. Dan's Horror, had reviewed this because he had picked it up, and it's been on my list for a long time. So after he reviewed it, he actually was reviewing the extra film, The Evictors, and um, was talking about The Town of the Red Sundown, which I've seen, and I've seen the remake. Um, but I decided to go ahead and, and bite the bullet and get it on the shelf. This is from 1976, directed by Charles B. Pierce, which uh, you may be familiar with um, The Legend of Bog Boggy Creek, The Legend of Boggy Creek 2, The Story Continues, and then, of course, Evictors that I mentioned that is an extra bonus feature here. Uh, Don Wells is in this. If you are a fan of Gilligan's Island, you remember her as Marianne from the uh, back in the day. Uh, this is in 1946. A Texarkana hooded killer is stalking victims by night and murdering them. Uh, it's based on a true story. Um, I don't know how much of that is, is accurate uh, as far as what happens, but uh, it also uh, includes the uh, infamous trombone murder, which if you've seen this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've never seen it in anything else. Uh, the closest thing I could think of is maybe the, how the killer was murdering people in uh, uh, Peeping Tom. Anyway, uh, some trivia. This, uh, some of the scenes in this were recycled from The Legend of Boggy Creek. And also, this is supposedly the inspiration for Friday 13th Part 2, which if you notice the, the hooded killer might be a little bit of a stretch. I don't know. Um, then we have... Well... I'll mention this just, I wasn't sure if I was going to bring this up, but uh, we were talking about Twister because there's the new one coming out and I I saw this in the theater, as did my wife. Um, actually, I saw all of these except for Poseidon. I hadn't seen that one until I did a show on it on my former podcast. Um, but we were talking about this and I decided I wanted to see it and I'm like, you know, it's inexpensive for all three. Pick it up, put it on the shelf. It's kind of the, uh, this is one of the original like kind of when block, summer blockbusters were just kind of starting to become a thing. Um, if you've not seen these, they're fun. The little way to, to waste a couple hours for each of them. They're all decent. Um, and not a lot extra on there. If I don't think anything extra because they're, you know, they're just a triple feature. But it's fun and it's inexpensive. So if you want them, just to have them as part of your collection. There you go. And then finally we have, this is the thing that people have been waiting for for a long time. I have the the modern series from 2016. This is the original 1997. It just came out a week ago. Um, it ran for one year. It didn't complete, so the, the entire series, it ends on a cliff uh, cliffhanger. Um, but if you're not familiar with Berserk, it is um, about Guts the Swordsman, who hooks up with Griffith and his band of merry men, who then uh, start... Um, working for the, as royal guards and then kind of work their way up to being pretty high up in power and things go sideways. Um, that's all I'll really say. And there's just say there's a lot of demons and naughty stuff going on. And it's, it's, it's a pretty crazy trip, but uh, um, this was done by uh, Kentaro uh, Miura who uh, did all of the berserk stuff. Um, and so, uh, something I saw that was kind of interesting was the sword in this theoretically weighs 400 pounds and is about six foot six. Um, so, you know, Guts obviously must have some pretty big muscles. Uh, so if you've never seen this, it's not for everybody, but it's widely considered one of the, the best of the, the animes series that was out there. And unfortunately, since it never got finished, um, you know, we won't ever know how that could have gone if it had stayed, but there is the 2016, which I've heard mixed things about. It's on the shelf, haven't watched it yet. And then I've also got the trio of movies that they then took that story totaled it in, in its entirety with updated uh, animation and in three separate films. It's it's good. It's not as good as the original series, but it's worth having. And if you're a completionist like me, you kind of need all three things. But anyway, so if you would like to find more of this, check out the YouTube channel that you're on currently. Go see all the other videos we have. I've got a lot of other unboxing stuff and more coming. Also, check out the newlydeads.com for everything else that we have. We do six new content items a week didn't say that very well. There's something that comes out every day except Friday. That's the one day we take off during the week. So every day you've got something new you can check out. We've got a podcast. We've got our TV show on Tingler Television. We have uh, two different blog posts that go out a week, two new videos that go out a week, and um, potentially more things coming down the road. Uh, we also have our events where if you'd like to come see us live or if you'd like to, uh, you know, just come by and say hello, buy some of our artwork. Uh, there's 
uh, all the information about what's coming up for us. And um, there's links to our affiliate pages where if you'd like to support us, you can also um, you know, try the world. And um, what's the other one I'm forgetting? We have another affiliate. Oh, Sticker Mule. Yeah, we just recently, they're not technically affiliate, but there's a code on there that uh, will get you a discount. It, 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 it's explained on there. I don't remember how to put it. Um, so that's there. And then there's a history about us. So I've droned on for long enough. Also, if you'd like to reach us, contact at thenewlydeads.com. That's where I'm going to leave it. So until next time, um, you know, keep checking the website and uh, we'll be back for more unboxing. So see you later. Festival of Sauron. Happy Halloween.